Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over quickly uh, what I'm going to set up for uh, a fall guided trip in my plug bag. Um, so generally, I'm, well, just to kind of preface this, I am a surf fishing guide on Cape Ann. I've done, I don't even know, probably well over 80 clients this season. And, you know, throughout the season, it, everything changes from the bait, the places we're fishing, how we're fishing, everything changes. So pretty much every single day we go out and every single day I guide, I'm gonna have a slightly different bag. And um, today we are uh, late, or I guess the beginning of the end of the fall run, I should say. So that means that we're gonna be uh, having a lot of small peanut bunker around, not as many big bass around. We just probably la lost our bigger bass in the past week or so. So, um, as far as like the bigger fish go, the we're not going to be running into too too many bass that are over 35 inches. Uh, but we do have a chance that we could run into some bass that are that 25 to 35 inch fish. That's pretty average for this time of year. So you got to keep that in mind when you're thinking about what I'm going to bring. I don't need anything too giant because a lot of the bait they're feeding on is small, and a lot of the fish are not going to be giant either. Uh, so that also means that you got to take into consideration what tackle you're using, what your rod and your line is rated for. So a lot of the time, this time of year, we're using rods that are nine foot rods. Uh, and that's for most of the summer, I guess you'd be using nine foot rods in Cape Ann. Uh, I like a one to three ounce rod or a half ounce to three ounce rod uh, this time of year. Uh, so I'm going to be using actually a, a, some lighter rods. So one of my favorite ones is the uh, Lamb Glass Carbon Surf 9 foot light, which is a 3 8 uh, to 2 ounce rod. This time of year, this is an awesome rod. I also fish a lot with the 9 foot medium, which I'm going to show you here. So this 9 foot medium Carbon Surf, these are two fairly inexpensive rods, but are built on a blank that is a super awesome fishing rod, uh, especially for this time of year. Uh, with this 9 medium, I've actually landed a 49 inch bass this season. Uh, off the beach this fall run actually. So that was pretty amazing. Uh, and it just shows you that there's plenty of power in this rod. Um, and that is rated from a half ounce to three ounces. So if you think about it, a lot of what we're gonna be throwing are in that half ounce to three ounce range. Although if we go lighter, the lighter rod is definitely gonna be able to handle those smaller bucktails and jigs, which we'll get into in a second. So for now, uh, I'm just gonna, I'll show you the, uh, a lot of the, the plugs that I would be using. So this client in particular, I was talking to him and he would like to fish mostly on the beaches. Um, and he also would like to fish uh, where um, he can fish into the night. So we're gonna start in the evening and we're gonna go into j dusk, into a little bit into dark. Uh, and that's what he wants to learn, how to, you know, obviously what lures he should be using during the day because that's gonna be the primary time that he's fishing. but. Fishing at night is obviously most productive for the, primarily the whole year, besides probably the fall, to be honest. I mean, the fall is one of those times where the, the fishing during the day is actually quite good and you can even catch giant fish. I mean, the big bass I got this fall was on a, it was during the day. It was like 11, 12 o'clock. So that's pretty amazing. Um, so right now, uh, so what I'm thinking about setting up this bag, I think, okay, we're going to be fishing on a beach and then I have a few beaches that, I'm, that I have in mind and I know that most of these uh, beaches that we're going to be fishing on have a steeper drop off and a trough and the bass kind of run that and chase the bait along that. So we don't need to get anything that casts crazy far. We're not fishing any sandbars or anything for that matter. So in my mind, I know that I don't, I can use stuff like red fins, for example. Uh, and those are going to, even though they might not be able to cast very far, uh, they're going to work well because we don't need to get crazy distance, even 10 foot casts are going to be more than enough to catch a lot of those nicer bass, especially into the dark, uh, that are just going to be running the trough lines. Uh, and it seems like because of the way the wind is right now, that it's very common flat out. So we know that we're not going to really be battling big surf, uh, conditions either. So let's just keep those two things in mind. At least that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm actually going to start with like daytime plugs. Uh, so that's what I'm going to start with right now. Um, I do have a few things that are like in here from, from past, like during the, uh, 
During the summer, we fish a lot of bigger spooks. This time of year, we don't necessarily need larger spooks or anything like that. Um, I do have bigger topwater poppers when there's a lot of big bunker around. It's sometimes an easy thing to throw. I have some smaller spooks, but we'll get into exactly what we need for the fall run right now. Um, and we'll kind of just ignore this stuff. So uh, right now, um, I'm gonna start with, okay, we know that if they're on a lot of peanut bunker, uh, a lot of the plugs that I'm gonna be using, I want to be pretty easy because he's a more of a beginner uh, surfcaster, so we know that we don't want anything that's too, too complicated to work. Um, and that's good because I personally, uh, you know, think that if you can get away from stuff that's fairly easy to use, um, that's like, that's money because uh, you'll be able to use stuff. And even if you are having to give the lure action, which is something that is more difficult to do for beginners, uh, to think about a lot of stuff as they're reeling, like trying to produce the action they need while reeling, it's, it's pretty tough. So um, what I like to do is, and I like a, this time of year, and I fish this myself a lot, are, are poppers that, you know, all you gotta do is just, you know, pop them, and then they'll create a splash, and it looks very realistic. Bass love them this time of year. We have stuff like the Polaris poppers, and then like other chugging top water poppers. What I mean by chugging is you just sweep the tip of your rod and it just splashes and splashes and that's what's gonna give you the action you need. So there's two main ones that I really like. Um, you have the uh, Stillwater Smackets. This is a Stillwater Smacket uh, Junior and then the, the little bit bigger Stillwater Smackett Senior here. So these are awesome this time of year. They mimic peanut bunker perfectly. This is actually the first top water that I learned how to use and I fished a ton when I was growing up during the fall run. Uh, it, they just catch fish, especially the junior does. It, later in the season, when I'm talking like late October into November for us on Cape Ann, they're towards the end of the season when you do have blitzes going on, but a lot of the fish are really small. This is a very fun, fun lure to throw at them. It's easy to work. You just tweak the top of your rod and the bass love them. So these two are for sure gonna be going in my bag. Uh, a little bit bigger one if there's some bigger bass around or the peanut bunker is a little bit larger and a smaller one if the peanut bunker is smaller. So I'm gonna throw these two in in my plug bag for more daytime stuff. So I'd be throwing these during the day specifically. Okay, so now let's move on to a different topwater like chugging style popper. Uh, this is the Super Strike Little Neck Popper. This is a fast sinking one. Uh, this is gonna get us out a little bit further. It's a super easy one to cast, and it's that same motion that you can sweep the top of your rod. The easiest way to learn this one is you actually reel down the slack and you pop up. Reel down, pop up, reel down, pop up. That's how I like to work these. They obviously come in bigger styles. Uh, you try, like This is a larger version of, of this one, uh, and they both work fantastic for when this one, especially when there's bigger bass around, but this as well works really well. Uh, and you can even fish this at night. So say you were in a really windy scenario and you casted this out, you could reel it straight in, just reeling slow, and it's gonna swim. With its, it's gonna look like that in the water and it's gonna swim and the bass love it. And it's a great casting lure. So it, it works well in the falls because it mimics peanut bunker and other small white bait. So I'm gonna throw this one in as well. Uh, and then we're going to move on to kind of a few lures that we need to impart the action onto. Uh, and one of those is a small spook. So we have um, Rebel Jumping Minnows. These are my personal favorites. Uh, the Rebel Jumping Minnow in the fall, you pretty much can't beat it as a small spook goes. And I've caught bass up to 45 inches on these. They're amazing little spooks when the bass are blitzing on peanut bunker and being really finicky. You can't beat this lure. It walks across the surface of the water. You can catch largemouth bass on this and then you can catch 45 inch bass on, striped bass on this, which is just amazing. And it just has, for some reason, the rattle and the noise and the action on this, for whatever reason, is almost unbeatable as far as spooks go and as far as small spooks go. So this one, I highly suggest, it's a pretty inexpensive lure as well and you can really catch lots of fish, even some big fish on it. I'm gonna throw a few of these ones in, uh, cause this is kind of like the main thing that I really like giving people. And, uh, and it's also a great intro plug to uh, people that want to learn how to use like pencil poppers. 
because it's pretty forgiving uh, when you're trying to impart action onto it. It's a pretty forgiving lure and um, it, it, it catches fish really easily. So I love this one. It's going, I'm going to bring a few of these with me uh, because they are super important. Um, I also generally on my smaller lures like this, I'm pinching the barbs on my treble hooks uh, because it, it makes it a lot easier for me to number one unhook the fish. But if I get a hook in my hand because the fish are smaller and they're really green when you get them in, you don't, uh, you know, it's easy to take out and it's not that big of a deal. Um, I also switched the hooks out on my Rebel Jumping Minnows to 204 4X Strong VMCs because the hooks that come on it are for freshwater fish and striped bass will bend those out no problem. So I highly suggest bending the, or putting on new hooks onto those so they don't get bent out. Some guys put singles on them. I'm not a huge fan of single hooks. I think that you miss 85% of the fish that blow up on your lure unless they eat it, uh, will, um, you'll miss them. So I'm not a huge fan of that, especially guiding. I want my clients to actually catch fish. So that's why I have trebles on those. I get that question a lot. So I just wanted to address that. Okay. Another spook that I'm going to throw in that I've really, uh, enjoyed recently and has worked well. Uh, and actually a story that kind of goes along with it. Um, I'll grab one right now is the, uh, arm Smith jig Smith. Uh, this lure right here, uh, worked really well for me this past weekend. Um, I was on a blitz and I was kind of in a little lineup scenario where I had like four or five guys to the left and right of me. Um, and I was fishing just by myself. Uh, everybody else was using pencil poppers. There's bass everywhere. They're all blowing up on peanut bunker, but nobody else was hooking up. So I threw on the little arm Smith. I casted it out there and I'm just, it's a spook. I was giving it action like a spook. So it was walking back and forth in the water and I was hooking up every single cast. So that's a little tip for you. Like small, medium sized spooks like these are fantastic during blitzing scenarios when the bass are being extra finicky. Uh, highly suggest using this. Another one that's very similar to that is the uh, Pumba Plugs Walker. This is, does almost identical action to it. Uh, they're very productive. So I highly suggest both of these as like a medium sized spook. This one's a little smaller, uh, but like as a medium sized spook goes, they are both awesome and they catch lots of fish and some pretty decent fish. I mean, on, on this spook in particular, um, I've gotten bass that are again, way over 45 inches. This, they love these like medium size spooks, especially when they're on peanut bunker. So I'm going to put a few of these, you know, medium, great great spooks in here because that's super important uh as well as just like when you're trying to uh target blitzing fish or finicky fish they love um they love spooks and then i'm probably gonna throw in one more spook uh this is a yozuri i believe that they call this the like it's like a walking pencil or something or they call this a pencil but it's very similar to the uh, jumping minnow. It's a small spook, uh, and it's from Yozuri, uh, and it just walks back and forth. It's been pretty productive. Uh, I've actually had a harder time catching fish on this recently this year, but, uh, and they've wanted the jumping minnow over this one, but it's one that I'm going to throw in my bag. It has a little bit bigger profile than the jumping minnow, but it's again, a smaller spook that is thinner profile and a great one that I want in my bag. Um, okay. Now, as far as pencil poppers go, uh, I, I need a few different types of pencils. Uh, I got the, I'm, I got plastic pencils that I'm going to have with me and then I have wooden pencils that I'm going to have with me. I think that it all depends on what's going on, but if the bass are blitzing, especially bigger fish, I personally think they like wooden pencils better. I just think they make less noise and they kind of, uh, maybe look more like the, uh, the bunker that they're feeding on. But, uh, that doesn't mean that they won't eat a, uh, they won't eat a plastic spoon or plastic pencil, sorry. And that's something they do a lot of the time. So, uh, the tsunami talking popper in both the, uh, small size one and the bigger size one, these might be the, like the XD or the like a little bit heavier ones. Uh, these are awesome. I'm a big fan of like yellow over white or yellow colors this time of year because the peanut bunker bone is also a great color. So I'm going to have both of these in my bag and then as well, along with these, I'm probably going to throw in one that's more bunker colored, uh, but still just a, uh, still 
a little bit larger tsunami talking popper. These are awesome. So say we're on the beach and the bass are in a pod far out, even with the nine foot rod, you can send these pencils extremely far uh, and they're very, uh, very good. Now, let's see what we got. Uh, so I have, I'm gonna put all three of these in, and that's like, it's, that's perfect for my, uh, my spooks. Uh, that's perfect for my, um, my pencils, as far as plastic pencils go. Uh, I really like these, and, and they catch fish, uh, and uh, they cast super far, so I, I like those. Okay, so then as far as wooden pencils go, I'm gonna put probably two uh, or three different wooden pencils in. I want a, a bigger pencil. Um, these are both all Puma pencils. I really like these. Um, they cast far, they're weighted well, they're a little heavier, I can really get them out there. Um, actually with this lure, I broke off on a really big fish this past week. Uh, it, was, it was all of, you know, 35 pounds. It was a, it was a really big bass and uh, this is just a smaller version of that. So this is like a seven inch and this is a six inch. Um, white, yellow, bone, that color is great. So I'm gonna grab probably two, maybe three of these, maybe one uh, in uh, bunker itself. Um, that's, uh, that tends to be the, the best thing, uh, the best thing you uh, wanna do this time, uh, this time of year. Okay, so put this in. This in. So now I have, not only do I have my, uh, my, my pencils, but I also have, you know, I got my, my plastic pencils, got my wooden pencils, I got my spooks, uh, and that's going to cover a lot of my daytime stuff. As you see, like I throw a lot of top waters during the day. I'm not a huge fan of like minnow plugs and stuff during the day. Uh, they do work great, but, um, as far as the way that I fish a lot, I'm either going to be fishing soft plastics during the day, or I'm going to be fishing on the, on the surface. Top water is kind of my main go-to because I believe that you get a lot bigger fish with, uh, top water lures. Okay. So, uh, now that we have like all of our, like our main top water lures, we're going to kind of move into nighttime. And, uh, there's a few ways we can go with the nighttime lures and like, I guess more subsurface stuff. So number one, I'm just going to go and I'm going to grab, um, a small glide bait. I'm going to grab two glide baits. I actually found this glide bait, but any small glide bait that kind of looks like a, a peanut bunker, uh, is going to be great. This is a, uh, Pumba plugs glide bait, uh, which is awesome. These like anything that looks like a small peanut bunker is going to be perfect. And that's what you want to use. So I'm going to throw both these guys in. Then we're going to grab, uh, for as far as nighttime lures go, there's a lot of different really good ones that we can use to probably grab a small darter. Um, I'm going to grab a, cause it, we're getting closer to the, um, we're getting closer to the new moon. So we're going to go a little darker colors. So here's black and purple is the tactical anglers, uh, zigzag darter or whatever they call it, but it's the tactical anglers darter. These are great at night. All you do is just cast them out, dig in the lip and real slow. That goes for most starters. That's all you really have to do. Um, so we're going to throw that in. Then I'm also going to throw, uh, some needlefish in. So in the fall, needlefish are super awesome. They're one of my main go-to lures. Uh, they mimic peanut bunker perfectly. I love fishing needles. Um, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab a bigger needle. And then I also want to grab from Puma plugs. This is a Puma plugs needlefish. And then this is a super strike bullet needlefish. These two will cover my bases as far as needles go. Um, this obviously looks a lot more like a peanut bunker. This is a little bit bigger, but still that thin profile in the fall. I've even caught late, late fall on this, uh, like tons of fish on this. So it's definitely one I want in my bag. Okay. So I got my needles. I got some glide baits. I got a darter. So I'm you see how I'm covering my bases here. And, uh, as far as like plugs go now, now I, I, as I did preface, I don't like minnow plugs that much, but there are a few that I will use during the, uh, during the fall. And I think that, um, they do catch schoolies 
especially for beginners, they're, they're not a bad choice to pick up and fish. Uh, so one of those is going to be for nighttime is a black and purple. Um, so you got a few different things. These are the minnow plugs I'm going to be carrying with me. I got a black and purple SP minnow. I got a black and purple red fin. And then I got a small red fin here. And these are all going to be great minnow plugs that will definitely catch fish for me. Uh, and then I have one more that I'm going to grab. As for, and that will be what I'll be carrying tonight when I'm guiding as far as lures go. And I'm sure I've missed some stuff that, you know, there's lots of different stuff that work well in the fall. I'm sure you guys can tell me, you know, and I'd love to hear what your favorite fall plugs are as well, because um, I'm sure that I'm, I'm missing some stuff from my bag that I should be having. Uh, and I'm also sure that uh, you guys, um, I might have some of the same stuff that you guys use and just have not put it in my bag tonight. But that as far as like pretty much will cover all my bases. And then I might add maybe like a, a small metal lip too. Like here's a little metal lip. I have no idea who makes this. I just found this on the beach. Uh, and this is perfect um, for this time of year. Again, it mimics that, that peanut bunker perfectly. You reel it slow. It's going to be right up under the surface. And when the bass are feeding on peanut bunker, you kind of can't go wrong with a small metal lip um, for a nighttime, nighttime plug. So there we go. I, that's as far as the lures that I'm going to be throwing. Now we can get into kind of soft plastics and jigs. Okay. So super important soft plastics. Um, I really like Algag Whippet Fish during the day. I'm going to bring a bunch of these with me. Uh, and I'm going to bring them in mostly the small version. This time of year, we don't need crazy amounts. These are like half ounce, half ounce ones. Um, they're awesome. I do have storm sheds and stuff that are great this time of year too. This will kind of cover my bases. Uh, so I'll have in here for sure. I'll show you one right now. I even will bring maybe a, a two ounce or sorry, I'll bring like a three fourths ounce, but just with a little bit bigger body to the shad. Uh, that's awesome. I like to super glue my the heads down and then I'm a huge fan of bucktails as well. I'm going to have a few different ones. Ones that are like half ounce up to, uh, or well, I'll have like a three fourths ounce one and I'll have like a half ounce one. And that's like all I really need as far as bucktails go. Uh, this time of year, bucktails are super important. Then you have those storm shads right here that look exactly like a peanut bunker. These are awesome. I highly suggest using these. So that's definitely gonna be my bag. If there's sand eels around, which there could be on this beach, uh, I do have a Savage Gear sand eel in here just in case. I don't predict that there would be, but it's you never know. Sometimes they show up. And then I think that's pretty much it uh, as far as plugs go and as far as soft plastics go on what uh, I'm going to be throwing in my fall guiding plug bag. Um, that's kind of my main go-to stuff uh, that I'm going to be using. And uh, it covers from the larger end of bait that can move through to the smaller end of bait. I mean, you could see mackerel uh, out there, but a lot of the bass are going to be in that smaller range. So we don't need too big of plugs in here. A lot of smaller things as you saw today. Um, so that kind of covers my bases here. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video. Uh, tell me if you want more of this type of stuff, uh, because I've done walkthroughs of plug bags from like some spring plug bags, summer plug bags. I could do a whole whole array of stuff for when there's different bait, uh, beaches, estuaries, um, and like all, there's all different stuff that I could do if you're interested. Um, and yeah, I know this is kind of a longer form video. It's almost like a podcast kind of deal, but I just kind of wanted to walk through that because I get so many questions about what I bring in my plug bags. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you like my late fall plug bag. I know like for a lot of you guys in Maine uh, and Massachusetts, the bigger bass are either just rolling up on you or, or as far as like Massachusetts go, they're just going to be ending their the fall migration uh, kind of around us in Cape Ann. And then they are going to be showing up in Southern Mass in a little bit. They're, they're going to have a little run of them and then they're going to go. But Maine for sure is run, running out of their bigger fish. We're going to run out of our bigger fish. And then uh, you guys in New Jersey and Long Island, all New York, that Connecticut, all of that area, 
uh, are going to end up having schoolies around as well. So this will hopefully show you a little bit about you know what I'll use when there's smaller bass around, feeding on smaller bait like peanut bunker. Uh, that's what I carry in my fall plug bag. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you next time.